Hey everyone, it's James with Off Leash Canine Training coming at you with another edition of Trainer Thursdays. Uh, today we have a very special guest uh, with us, our trainer Ricky, who trains like the Long Island, New York City area. And Ricky's going to tell us a little bit about the pup and about what she does. So Ricky, if you don't mind telling us a uh, name, age, and breed of the pup in this video. Yeah, sure. This is uh, this is Ben. He's 13 weeks old. He's a German short hair pointer. Very nice. And why is Ben with us today? Ben is here to do a two-week board and train to um, learn some basic obedience. Okay. And, uh, you know, what are some of the um, things that their parents are trying to accomplish and, you know, one of the main reasons why they, they sent them for us? Well, Ben's parents um, are interested in utilizing him as a hunting dog in the near future. Um, so they've been struggling with his leash pulling, obeying basic commands, focusing, um, on his handler in outside settings, um, especially areas that have like a lot of leaves and small game. Um, they would like for him to walk calmly on, on the leash as well as obey the commands off leash, uh, especially in like suburban areas comprised of nature settings. Okay. Now we're going to play the video for you guys. Boy, Ben, we feel. See, you can see that. Turn the volume a little bit down. But um, if you don't mind explaining just what you're working on here with Ben Ricky. So, right here, I was working on his heel and place. Okay. In that outside area where there are leaves and squirrels and birds and whatnot. Very nice. Okay. So it looks like you have an extended place and then, uh, okay. Now what do you work? recall with? and an off leash heel. Okay. Awesome. Now, as far as the, uh, recall off, off leash heel, is it something where right away you start with the off leash heel or do you start, you know, in a confined environment or I guess what's that progression look like? I always start in a confined environment. I start within the perimeters of my home, um, which is a corner property gated in. Um, once I do that, then I, I, I start to veer out outward into the neighborhood. Um, and then I'll go into stores, parks, and things of that nature. And as far as the age ranges of the... Um you know, pups that, that come to you, um, what, what are the main age, age ranges and breeds I would say? Um, I've, I've worked with dogs from eight to 12 weeks old to about six or seven years old. Okay. And as far as breeds, um, you know, what is the range for that? Uh, I've worked with a wide array of breeds, um, labs, golden retrievers, Rottweilers, all types of doodles, shepherds, pointers, border collies. Uh, I've I've had a, a large amount of different breeds. And when you know various customers come to you, Ricky, what are your um, I guess what is their main main issues that they tend to have, um, or that someone may want to get you know trained with? Usually, it's basic obedience. I get a lot of leash pulling, um, react reactivity, um, focusing while in distractions, and pretty much just teaching them manners. And as far as, as someone sitting at home, uh, watching the video, maybe they, they have a pup that is, you know, good, sometimes bad, they're like, you know, he, he's great, but in one area, he's, he's, he's okay. Um, you know, what's one piece of advice you could tell someone at home uh, to kind of start to look out for and, and what cer certain behaviors may require training. Well, I, I, I think that if your dog is exhibiting any type of behavioral issues, excessive barking, um, reactiveness towards cars or people, running out your front door, anything um, in that nature, or they do not respond to basic commands. They should consider training their dog. Yeah, absolutely. Every dog needs to be challenged and, and needs to feel like they're working towards some sort of goal. Um, and they rely on us as their parents to give them that. So 
having that structure to live a happy and fulfilled life is beneficial if you if you want a dog to have those manners within your home and outside of your home. That's great. And I, a little bit about you, Ricky. Why did you become a dog trainer? I guess what is your background with with pups? Well, I'm a retired uh, canine narcotics officer. Um, I was training dogs with the city of New York. And I just have a, a passion for dogs, for training dogs. I love dogs. I love what I do. And I get a purpose from, from seeing my work um, help transform a dog to live a better life. That's and great. helping the parents <laughs> deal with those, those dogs that are being destructive and, and not complying. Right. Because part of it is, is obviously training the dog, say, in, in a two-week board and train program to, you know, be, uh, you know, obedient in, in the various commands. But the other half of it is is training the parents uh, in, you know, in depth on, on how to continue everything after. Because obviously it's it's, it's one thing if, if you can do it, but you want to make sure that you're communicating with the parents, showing them a, you know, a blueprint on how to continue everything moving forward. Um, you know, certainly part of it as well, I would think. Correct. Correct. Because having a dog is training for their whole life every day. I feel like you need to train your dog every day, even, even in the, the, the little, the littlest um, scenarios. If you're washing your dishes, put your dog in a sit and a stay. Things like that every day will eventually turn your dog into being a better dog in the future. Well, that's great info. Well, it's Certainly appreciate you jumping on with us, Ricky. I think that's going to do it today. Um, okay. If you guys like what you saw, certainly give us some some likes, shares, comments on things you want to see maybe next time. And again, thanks so much, Ricky, for jumping on. And uh, we'll see you guys uh, next week. No problem. Thank you.